the Quincy School Committee of Wednesday, March 22. Would you please stand for the pledge? Superintendent. Thank you. We have one memoriam tonight. If you could please keep in your thoughts and prayers the family um, of the following employee uh, who has passed away. Susan Devlin, she was a teacher at the Atherton Howe Elementary School for 29 years, and Mrs. Devlin retired in uh, 1986. Again, if you could please keep um, Susan Devlin and her family in your thoughts and prayers. Thank you. Thank you, Superintendent. Please call the roll. Mr. Bergoli, Mrs. Cahill, Here. Mr. Getro, Mrs. Hubley, Present. Mrs. Lebo, Present. Mrs. Santoro, Present. and Maya Coke. Present. Uh, pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived, by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. Uh, at this time, I'll entertain a motion to accept the regular meeting minutes of March 8th. On a motion of Mrs. Hubley, seconded by Mrs. Lebo, we approve. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. I uh, will also entertain a motion to approve the executive session minutes of March 8th. On a motion of Mrs. Cahill, seconded by Mr. Gatro, we approve. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed and the ayes have it. Item two, open forum. This is an opportunity for the community to give its input regarding QPS uh, community. In this context, the community is defined as the city of Quincy parent um, a student who attends the QPS or an employee of the QPS, non-community non uh, persons are not permitted to speak at open forum, but they may submit written statements to the school committee. After giving uh, his or her name and address, each speaker may make a presentation of no more than four minutes to the school committee, and an individual may not exchange their time or yield to others. Interested parties may also submit written statements. This is uh, Owens. We have a letter at this point, too, right? Yes, we do. Would you read it, please? Sure. So this letter was submitted by uh, Quincy High School student Helena Middleton. I'm here uh, writing today to talk about a gender inequity that I have been faced with my whole life. I've had a passion for baseball since I was just a little kid tossing the ball in my backyard with my brothers. I was in first grade when I joined my first baseball team and continued playing on an all-boys team until I was in eighth grade. I was the only girl pitching and still striking out all the boys. Upon arriving to high school, I was forced to give up the sport I had spent so many years training for just because I was a girl. My whole life, all of my coaches have said I had talent. COVID hit my freshman and sophomore year, and I didn't even get the chance to attempt to play, but when I tried to sign up last year, I wasn't allowed to try out because we have a softball team. If you know anything about softball, you would know that softball and baseball are completely different sports. If the same rules were applied from baseball, there would be no issue, but I've pitched for baseball my whole life, and pitching for softball would be learning a whole new language. I don't see why my gender should determine which sports I can and can't play, especially since I had been on youth teams a lot, with a lot of the boys on the current baseball teams at Quincy and North. I can have an impact on the team, and I'm just as capable to play baseball as any of the other boys. I was one of the two girls on the football team this past season, so I know how boys are, plus the fact I am the middle child of two brothers. The MIAA is one of the only organizations in New England that doesn't allow girls on the baseball teams. See me, seeing Massachusetts is the home to one of the greatest Major League Baseball teams to date, you'd think they would be more inclusive. Thank you, Mrs. Owens. Do we have uh, um, anybody in the audience for open forum? Please come forward, state your name and address. Do I need to? I think mic? it's on. I, oh, all right. 
actually, I think I know you all, but uh, for the record, my name is Linda Monaco. I live at 21 Glendale Road in Quincy. I've lived in Quincy for over 50 years, and I had a wonderful career as a Quincy public school teacher for about 40 years. I am the proud parent of three successful adult children who went K through 12 in Quincy Public Schools. I'm an even prouder grandparent of three current QPS students, and I'm pleased to have a daughter-in-law who teaches in Quincy. You might say I have a vested interest in the school system. I'm, a very, I'm also very grateful for what the teachers of Quincy gave and continue to give to my family. Now, during my teaching career, I lived through an educator's strike and wasn't sure that we would ever recover from it. Thankfully, teachers and children are resilient and we carried on. I lived through a period in the 90s when the QEA president moved into the job of human resources director for the Quincy school system, just like what happened two years ago. Then as now, the teachers were devastated by this betrayal, but did not let their feelings interfere with their job of educating the children of Quincy. Like all of you, I lived through the recent pandemic, the likes of which we've not seen in our lifetimes. During this time, your teachers were subjected to a monumental challenge of delivering instruction remotely, and sometimes both remotely and in person, all at the same time. It was a nightmare no school system, its teachers and students would choose to go through. Now, I'm not privy to all the comings and goings of the current contract negotiations, but recently I spoke to a young teacher who was pregnant. When I asked her what she would get for her parental leave, I, I didn't believe her because what she said was the same leave that I got 35 years ago. And my daughter works for a company that gives four months paid parental leave, which does not come from their sick time. A friend of hers works for Salesforce, and she gets six months of paid leave. I know it's not fair to compare the budget of a large company to a city budget, but it is time to get serious about parental leave. Now, I'm no economist, but I do know what food prices are. The economy is not pretty. I also know the mayor likes to offer all the city unions the same financial package. There's no denying the police and fire departments work hard, but this is one time when I believe the teachers deserve financial recognition, not only for all they did to educate the children of Quincy through a pandemic, but also for all they continue to do to educate, nurture, and support the Quincy students of today and the future. This is a critical juncture for Quincy. You want the best teachers? You want a top-rated school system? You need to pay for that. Show our teachers they deserve more. Provide the best contract and you'll get and keep the best teachers. One last thing. When I was teaching, I'd watch kids try to organize a game during recess. They spent so much time on making the rules and complaining when the other team didn't follow the rules that they never got to play the game. Recess was over. From my perspective, what's been happening with negotiations over the last few months reminds me of just that. Now recess is over. It's time to settle the contract fairly and please show our teachers that you care. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else for open forum? Okay, seeing none, we'll continue on. Superintendent's report, item A, student recognitions, superintendent. Thank you and good evening everyone. On Thursday, March 2nd, the North Quincy Jazz Ensemble attended the Massachusetts Association for Jazz Educated Sponsored Competition at Canton High School. This is only the second time that the ensemble has attended a competition of this caliber, and we want to congratulate them on scoring a silver medal at the contest. So congratulations, particularly students Ethan Ernest, Kenneth Rail, and Jesse Bollinger were, were recognized for their outstanding musicianship. Again, congratulations to the entire group and these students in particular. On Saturday, March 11th, Quincy High School's History Bowl team won the state championship for the first time ever. History Bowl is a highly competitive academic sport in which pairs of teams go head to head answering challenging questions about a variety of historical errors. At the competition, Quincy High School bested teams from Hingham, Situate, Lexington, and Boston Latin, among others. Quincy High School's winning team consists of seniors Yufan May, Dara Prakash, and Liam McCoy, and freshman Eddie Giza, who earned an additional honor by winning first place in Junior Varsity History B. The team's victory qualifies them for the national championship, which will be held in Washington, D.C. in late April. And at your agenda later tonight, 
uh, we'll have the approval uh, of this trip to Washington, D.C. and a new business. So again, congratulations and, um, and best of luck to the team uh, going to Washington, D.C. Also, congratulations to North Quincy High School grade 11 students, Nicole Chen and Jialan Yu, for winning the CGI IT Girl Challenge. In this competition, students competed against other local high school teams to innovate, design, and pitch an app of their own. They developed Ascend, a networking app for high school students, which was awarded first place and a $20,000 prize. In addition, both students recently received a scholarship from Delta Airlines and ju Junior Achievement to attend the National Flight Academy in Florida. So very impressive. Congratulations to these students. Also, congratulations to the following Quincy Public School students who were recipients of the 2023 Boston Globe Scholastic Arts Awards. Ryan Setow, he received the Golden Key. Ira Habiba, the Silver Key. And three honorable mentions, Leo He, honorable mention, and Adeline Sun, honorable mention. Gold Key artwork is on display at Breeds Hall on the Tufts University Medford campus through March 25th. Again, congratulations to these students. They all make us very proud. On fr Friday, March 31st, students from both North Quincy and Quincy High School will participate in the annual Student Government Day at the Massachusetts State House. The program provides students with the opportunity to learn about state government, participate in the legislative process through simulated committee hearings, and House and Senate formal sessions, and engage in debates with peers from around the state and on state house, state house issues. Thank you to our state delegation and, of course, Speaker Ron Mariano for making this an opportunity for our students uh, to participate and become more and more familiar with state government, which is extremely important. Uh, next is the High School Performing Arts Fly-Up Day. On Tuesday, March 7th, over 150 grade 8 students from all five middle schools spent the morning at Quincy High School learning about the options available at both high schools for music, art, and drama courses and other extracurricular activities. The course selection process began on Friday, March 10th, so this assisted stu students uh, in making informed choices for their freshman year. Thank you to all of our administrators and teachers who helped make this a possibility for our students. And lastly, thanks to the support of local business partners, over 200 seniors from North Quincy and Quincy High School will attend the 15th annual Credit for Life Fair on Thursday, March 30th at the Terrell Room. Over 20 local businesses will engage with students in modeling how to budget, manage expenses, and build a solid financial future. Thank you to Keith Zagaler and Janice Erler for working with our partners and setting up this uh, annual event sponsored by a very, very generous uh, business partners within the city of Quincy. So uh, with that, that concludes my superintendent's report. Thank you. Very nice. Any comments, questions? Mrs. Lebo. I have a couple of questions. Um, I just wanted to mention that Mr. Rakita is trying to raise funds to take those kids to the History Bowl. So um, I don't know if we can just get that out to the public, but he is looking for funding to take those kids. It's pretty expensive um, to be doing it at the last minute for them to try and raise any funds. And the other thing I just wanted to mention, when we look at the Student Government Day, <clears throat> I did hear from a student at North Quincy High School, a sophomore, and she's interested in joining us on the school committee and getting the Student Advisory Council up and going, I believe. So I think, uh, Laurie, I believe Ms. Owens was going to talk to Quincy High also? Yes. Yep. And so hopefully we'll have that. Um, and then we'd like to, Ms. Ho Ms. Hoobley and I would like to discuss at some point in time giving those kids more of a voice when they're here. No, maybe not a vote, but a voice. Anybody else? Thank you. Old business, I see nothing on the agenda. New business, we have uh, item A, school nutrition program update. Ms. Sarah DeFore.
this. Good evening, everyone. I do need to pass the presentation. As you know, my name is Sarah Dufour. I'm the School Nutrition Director for Quincy Public Schools. And also here is Jane Minton, the Assistant School Nutrector for Quincy Public Schools. So what you have in front of you is a sample of some of the recipes we've been playing around with all year. Um, the chicken that's not breaded is called shawarma chicken um, with a slice of warm pita bread, whole grain. Um, and then you also have a farro and cucumber Mediterranean salad, salt and pepper chicken on a bulky roll, and for dessert, it's blueberry croissant bread pudding. So we can go into each individual recipe and how we came up with it, um, but ultimately, each thing is approved by the USDA for its um, fat content, whole grain content, um, zero trans fat, the vegetables that are required to be served, um, and low sugar. And you can feel free to try it now, or you can wait. It's up to you, but we'd love your feedback. So while you're tasting it, I'm just going to um, launch us to the nutrition website. This is linked to the Quincy Public Schools website, um, and it is the one-stop shop for all things school nutrition for Quincy Public Schools. This is where parents um, can find the meal application for the free and reduced meal forms. Um, our links to all of our social media pages, our wellness policy, our blog, our contact information, our prepayment options, and most recently we added this parent information tab right here, which is linked to things that we will get into a discussion on um, in this presentation that will help pa parents navigate the menus um, for their children, such as meal modifications, which is required by the USDA. So if a child has an allergy or a special medical need, they can contact us through this website as well. Oh, shoot. OK, so the first um, thing I wanted to get into tonight is we actually were selected by Project Bread for a fellowship grant opportunity. Um, we, it's a two-year program, and we've been working with them since the start of September. They have brought us two chefs. They're trained culinary chefs that come into our schools, and they spend time in our kitchens working with our staff. The USDA requires us to have a certain amount of professional development training, both Jane and I and the staff themselves. And Project Bread has been able to give us a ton of training from chef um, culinary skills, knife skills, to sanitation, to recipe development. Um, but the biggest thing that they really brought to us was helping us create more culturally um, diverse menu options for our very culturally diverse community. And that's what you have in front of you right now. So um, what's really exciting about this is that maybe our staff and maybe ourselves, we might not eat this at home, but our children, they're eating it at home. So to see it reflected on their menu is not only connecting them to us, excuse me, but also showing them that we're listening to them, we know what they like at home, and that we're including them in our menu planning. So I'm hoping this video works. I just want to show you. I'll give you a little backstory first before I click. Um, this is Chef Ryan, and it's a little video. He was at Lincoln Hancock. He did a, a tasting of the shawarma chicken, and um, the kids loved it. They were super excited. They said they eat it at home. Their parents make it. They have a recipe. Um, oh, shoot. It's not going to play. I won't waste your time. But um, he got the kids excited and cheering when they tried it. So it was a really cute um, video that we got. Um, some of the other benefits is it's been a team building experience for the staff at all the schools. A chef shows up for six weeks, and they're there 
twice a, day, uh, twice a week for six weeks, and they're going over all these different trainings um, and all these different recipes and giving the students a chance to sample it before it actually comes out on the menu. And that's the biggest takeaway, too, is that when you have an opportunity to try something before you commit to actually taking it as a meal, you're more likely to actually enjoy it and feel like you, you know, you're, you're going to like it, so you're going to take it. And that helps us build participation. So in 2022, 2023 school year, some of the other recipes and things that we've added to our menus um, are ancient grains. So what you're eating right now is farro. That is a whole grain. Um, again, this is a, a popular dish um, for all different types of cultures. And it's a whole, like I said, it's whole grain. So we can add a bunch of different things to it to make it a little bit more enticing. In this case, it's a Mediterranean style um, farro. But we put it on all of our salad bars across the district, and the kids really love it. We also add quinoa, um, and that's a huge uh, option for them, too. Um, another big thing, and this is actually a push from the children. I get emails about this, is plant-based proteins. Um, people are looking for this. They're eating it at home. They're eat getting it at grocery stores. So adding tofu, vegetarian nuggets are huge in the elementary schools. We served it this past Tuesday, and they went nuts for it. Um, it was with smiley fries, so that might have had something to do with it. But they loved it, and they don't really taste a difference. And it's just another opportunity to teach them that there are things you can try and things you can eat that doesn't necessarily have to be um, an animal protein for you to have a nutritious meal. So it's a good option. And also uh, black bean patties we have, too, as an option for the secondary schools as well. Um, so again, like I said, our, our real goal this year was um, culturally diverse meals. For Chinese New Year, we did a salt and pepper chicken, which is the other um, chicken on the bulky roll that you're eating right now. That's a flavor. If you taste it, you know immediately that's, that's something you would taste in a Chinese restaurant. It's very common on those menus. Um, and kids really loved it. We served this at all levels, uh, middle, elementary, and high school. Um, during Chinese New Year's, we did a vegetarian dumpling, which they loved. Um, that was a big success. And mandarin chicken. We've also been um, sampling adobo chicken, um, which is from the Philippines. And again, shawarma chicken, which you're trying now, and banh mi sandwiches, which is a Vietnamese meal. So I just wanted to highlight, because I talk about this every year that I've been here, we've wanted to get salad bars at our schools. We've now, we, get, we have salad bars at our schools, and now we're celebrating the success of our salad bars at schools. Um, we have some hidden gems in our staff, some men and women that either cook big elaborate meals in their homes or have worked in restaurants through their years and they have such skills that they bring to the table. So when you have something like a salad bar and just say, go for it, what do you want? What do you want to make for us? And the um, top left hand corner, this is Katya. She, um, if you remember Webster's in, in, um, in Quincy, that was the Lebanese restaurant. She used to work there, her family owned it. It's no longer there anymore. But when she told me she worked there, I grew up in Milton, and my mother used to work around in Quincy, and she would drive by that restaurant and bring, it, bring meals home to us at dinner when I was in high school, and we loved it. And so when she said that, I'm like, oh my god, that's like my childhood. We loved your food. And she said, can I make tabbouleh? Can I make hummus? I make grape leaves. And we we're like, yes, do it. So she's making marinated um, mushrooms and different types of pasta salads, and it's just different every day, and it's just a lot of fun. So the staff has a lot of fun with it. Um, so as you know, I think last year when we sat before you, we said we have no idea what 22, 23 will bring as far as the, the regulations for feeding our kids. And then sometime in the summer, they said you can feed your kids for free um, all year, which is great, and we've been doing that. So every child, regardless of their um, income, can come into our cafeterias, breakfast and lunch, and they eat for free. And we love it. We have been able to increase the amount of meals we um, provide our families. We have increased the amount of revenue we've been able to bring into our program, which has then increased the amount of equipment we can upgrade and make better for our kids. And it also helps with the quality of the food as well. So I, we sit before you again today not knowing what 23-24 will bring. Um, I know the governor has talked about it and supports a universal free meal program at least for another year. And then beyond that, I don't know. We would love for that to happen. It's looking like it might happen. The fact that it's even a conversation now is a really good sign. 
Um, so that's our goal. We really hope to continue this. It's We've kind of gotten used to it. It's been the third year, and it's just second nature now, and it's what I've always wanted. I'd love to work in a district where food is free for everyone, so we're really crossing our fingers. We'll see. Um, but that being said, Quincy does have uh, six CEP schools, meaning that no matter what happens, they continue to eat for free, and that's great. That's Lincoln, Snug, Parker, Southwest, Marshall, and Point Webster. Um, so regardless, next year they will be on the free meal program too. Oops. So the benefits of a universal free meal program that we see, um, number one, and this is big, there's no overt identification. We don't do this anyway, but sometimes children can get ahead of themselves and start talking and, and saying things to other children in the, in the lunch line. We never want a child to, to feel different or that they've been exposed for being a free student. So having everything be free is just wonderful. It puts everyone on the same playing field. So the stigma goes away. Um, it increases participation. We've already seen that. We know that that happens. Um, and then there's no unpaid meal debt that is accrued at the end of the year, so we don't have to worry about that, which is a huge benefit. I know that when we were talking to the Department of Education, um, we were audited this year, so I'll get into that. A woman was formerly um, working for the Department of Education for Rhode Island, and Rhode Island is now a paid, free, reduced state. They went back to the normal ways. They did not carry over the the COVID benefit of universal free. And she said the unpaid meal debt is out of control. And districts don't know what to do because kids are walking in going, what do you mean it's not free? It was free the last two years. I don't understand. So you don't have to worry about that messaging and getting it out there. You just carry on and continue getting, giving the kids food and doing what we want to do. Um, and as a parent, um, and I can relate to this, you save money. You don't have to wake up in the morning and go, oh my god, I didn't pack my kids' lunches today. Um, what am I going to make them? Can I give them money for school? It just takes away that chaos of the morning. Um, and then it just creates a cohesive, work, a cohesive elementary environment or middle school or high school environment where everyone sits and eats as a community and everyone's on the same playing field in the cafeteria, which is great. So things that we have done to improve um, our kitchens so far in 22-23 is um, we've added share tables to our schools. Um, and we're going to get into the food waste um, diversion pilot program. But this is huge. When we're trying to reduce the amount of food going in the trash, but we do have to make sure our children are taking a certain amount of components to make up a reimbursable meal, there are going to be some items that they're untouched and don't have to be thrown away. We can put on the share table um, with a cooler so that it stays safe and cool and another child can come along and grab that orange that's wrapped up or the carrot packs or the apples that have been sliced and bagged. Um, and it's just a way to not have it go into landfill. We've added a ton of new refrigeration, Beachwood, Lincoln, North, Atlantic, Squatham, and Point. And then we're at, we've added um, food warming units to Atlantic and North. So beyond today, we have a lot of pending purchases that we're ready to get, and it's just taken a little bit longer than I've wanted, but we're getting a new serving line at Atlantic. That is going to be amazing. It's uh, two cold units, two hot units, milk coolers, um, prep tables, and a register stand that'll be here by April vacation. So that'll have a whole new look um, with red to match the school's colors, and the manager's super excited about that, so that's really exciting. Um, We'll have a new deli station at Quincy High School that we'll be able to do over April vacation where the children have a more self-service option versus just having sandwiches pre-made for them. Um, last year I told you we were getting a food service truck. I'm here to tell you this year we're getting a food service truck. It's taken that long. But I've been told in March right now it's um, being fitted for its refrigeration portion, so it should be by June. Um, we're doing a lot of upgrades at North. It needs some new equipment. so. New open air fridge display, deli station, um, a sandwich chute, and a new heating unit. And um, the biggest thing that I would, I'm really excited about that I'm hoping will be done and ready by the start of next school year, but if not the year after that, is we're going to put a full function, full operating kitchen in Lincoln Hancock. Um, as you know, the elementary schools are a satellite program. At North Quincy High, we pack all our meals, we ship them out on our truck, they go out to all the elementary schools, and they're heated and served to the kids. Um, the next day. Lincoln would be the first elementary school to be a fully operating kitchen just like the middles and high schools. So they'll have um, a full oven, a walk-in fridge, um, a range top, a kettle, all the 
big pieces of equipment that make up a nice kitchen and then a proper serving line. So we have the space for that. And um, with the support of Kevin Melvy, we'll be able to get that in there um, by either the summer or the following summer based on budgeting. Um, and then the following year after we finish that, we're hoping to do the same thing for Walston. So the goal is with the revenue increased um, in the food service program by the universal free meals, we would be able to change how we feed the elementary school kids in Quincy, which is getting them full kitchens. <coughs> so again, as mentioned, um, we did go through an audit. That was last week, so it's been a crazy March for us. Um, they do it every three years, and this is our year, and they just basically go through every aspect of our program from the finances to the nutritionals to um, the serving lines to the staff training, everything you can imagine that we do on, on our day-to-day -day jobs. And we overall had a really great review. Um, we serve Wednesdays now at the elementary school, which we hadn't in years past. This was a USDA regulation that if you serve, if your children are in school, it doesn't matter if it's half day, you have to feed them. And so now we do. Um, and it's been seamless. And the Department of Education said that we're doing a wonderful job. And they're now sending directors to us to talk to us, uh, to ask us how we actually got it done. Because it was a challenge, but um, it's been a great success. We now serve 40 more lunch days for the elementary schools, which is equated to um, 190,000 more meals in this school year to the kids in the elementary schools. Um, so I don't want to steal the thunder of Emily Lebo's um, big food waste diversion pilot program, but I just wanted to touch upon it so everyone knows what's happening because it's been wonderful. Um, we have a food waste diversion committee, um, Emily Lebo, myself, Shelly Dean, Finbar Heslop, who is a new hire, and he is the food waste diversion manager, and Tom Henry. Um, we started at Quincy High School. And we started right after February vacation. And at Quincy High School, we serve between five and 700 meals a day. We've collected 400 pounds of waste per week. And recycling has um, increased to a half a ton of recycling, half ton recycling per week. Um, and we use the share table there. And we're seeing kids really understanding the process and wanting to do better for their environment and having a conversation with those standing at the compost station and, and wondering what's going on and, and how are we, what are we doing and how do we do this? And they're really, they're really grabbing hold of it. Um, and we can talk further about that too, but it's been, it's been wonderful. It's been really great. So again, the audit that we've had, the key takeaway is that we have a pleasant, organized, clean kitchen, um, great staff, nutritious food, no issues with our nutrition, which is wonderful. Um, our Wednesday meal service has been great. Safety and sanitation has been excellent. Um, the free and reduced lunch applications, although very small at, than years past because we are feeding for free, has no issues, wonderful there. And overall, we've seen a, a significant increase in the amount of meals we serve to the community. So every year we get interns. Jane and I were dietetic interns in our day. That's how we knew we wanted to do this for a living. Um, so now we get Simmons, Boston University, and Framingham State University students, and um, just some of the things that we have them do. They're in our office, and they're doing some day-to-day -day work for us, but they're actually out in the schools talking to the kids. They do presentations. They have to do one presentation before they leave, and it's usually a really significant one. Tomorrow we're going to Lincoln Hancock um, for all, all of the first grades. So 118 students, and we're doing a taste test on zucchini bread, and the conversation is about how you can upgrade your favorite treats to something a little bit healthier. I mean, there's nothing wrong with eating sweets, but how can you just make it a little bit healthier? And that's our whole thing, is that eating is good, it's communal, it's fun, um, but how do you just make it a little bit healthier so that you can learn the tools when you're young for the rest of your life? Um, so it's fun to have them. They keep us um, informed of all the new things that they're learning in their education, and we get to teach them about our career so that maybe one day they'll want to do this too. Um, on our website, we have added um, a food modification policy and process. We do this anyway, and this is just more, we're noticing that now that we're feeding more kids, there are a lot of kids with allergies out there or some sort of modification. Um, so this is just another way for them to reach us through our website and say, you, you can contact your nurse. That's great. We want you to do that. You can also contact us. We just need a doctor's note to let us know what the allergy is 
so that we can put it in the system and we can find a modification for you. So we're doing a lot of gluten-free um, meals around the district for different schools, different kids at different schools. We always have had the eight major allergens that we've been addressing, which is you know the soy and the, the tree nuts and peanuts um, and things like that. So we manage it. We just give them another, another opportunity to, to communicate with us what their issues might be. And that is it. Um, we'd love to hear your feedback on the meals. We'd love to answer any questions that you have. Mayor Cook. I don't know if this question is for you, Sarah. Okay. Oh, one second. You would, I got gotcha. you. You got me. Uh, thank you, you and Jane, for the presentation. But maybe it's family. Uh, at the start of this program with the food waste collection, mm -hmm. uh, how are we doing on the contamination part of it? I mean, that was a concern going in to make sure that. So we're doing very well. Um, we actually are monitoring the stations. Um, right now we're monitoring the stations. We have volunteers monitoring the stations, and we have more coming. But one day their volunteers couldn't be there, and so there was nobody at that station. And though there was almost no contamination, there was less food. So we entice them. You know, we like yeah. come our yeah. way when we're there. Um, we, we coax them to come over, and they're nice to the old ladies. They really are nice. <laughs> um, the kids have been absolutely wonderful, so there's really very little contamination. But... In the future, um, I'm learning a lot more about this than I ever did before. In the future, if we get bigger with this and we don't have as many monitoring situations, there are ways you can get rid of food waste. It's less, more contamination is allowable by putting it into the slurry. So that's taking it to um, Charlestown Naval Yard where they make biofuels out of it. They turn it into some sort of slurry and make biofuels, but they have the machines that just discard anything that's not well, it's not going to be compost. So that's why we're not calling it composting anymore because we really don't know where this is going to wind up. Right. So it's food waste diversion. So there, if it gets to that point and we really get good at this, we could possibly change the, the process. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. So no more pizza or meatball subs or hot dogs? No, no. Every day there's pizza. There there, uh, the high school has pizza every day. Um, they have meatball subs every day. <laughs> and Thank Monday's you. pizza at the elementary's. Mr. Gattro. Uh, so a couple of comments and a couple of questions, but I, I don't know if anybody around this table noticed, but uh, maybe with the exception of, of your dad, Dan, that I see all the time at the gym, but I, I've lost 20 pounds in, since May. And what I've learned is nutrition matters. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've been religiously going to the gym all the time, but nutrition matters. So, um, so I'm, I'm blown away, first of all, by the diversity of the options that you all offer and the nutritional options and the creativity that continues to come from both of you and your staff, you know, which is super exciting. The, um, I love the salad bars, you know, and I, I know they're a big hit. And um, so that's, that's great. I'm happy to hear that they're still hot, mm. in, seemingly, in all the locations. Uh, love to hear about the capital investments in the refrigeration units because you need you know that's kind of the backbone of, of everything that you do um food diversion is emily's thing but that's fantastic um what about packaging waste you know i understand there's probably a lot of packaging waste do you guys think about what goes into the trash versus what's recyclable on that end so Yes. Um, COVID kind of threw a wrench in a lot of what we had planned, and we're getting back to where we were. Um, we do compostable trays, so Emily can tell you those go in the compost. Napkins go in the compost. We're working towards um, compostable utensils. It is a cost, um, but it's not out of the question. We are going to start doing that at Quincy High School, so they have those. Um, you know, the elementaries can be tough because the little kids need to be able to balance everything that they're taking. We have these uh, mic these sealed containers. They cannot be recycled because they're lined with that thin layer of plastic. Even when you peel the top layer, the underneath layer is layered with a little plastic, and it has to be that way or it would just fall through if it was heated. Um, so there's ways that we're improving, and there's ways that we're still working to figure it out. Um, but overall, I think that we've done a lot. We have no longer do styrofoam, which is great. And that was something even the elementary school kids were really excited about because they, they wanted to see the change. They were understanding the problem with, with styrofoam. So we do 
every year try to think of a new way to improve something that's just not there yet. That's kind of where we're at right now. Good. Um, one, one last question. So I love the Universal Free Lunch Program, and yeah. I could see why you're a big fan. Is that all grades, all schools? Yes. It is. And the, the hope and expectation is that the Healy Driscoll administration will continue it. Yes. Excellent. Okay. Very good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mrs. Hubley? Yeah. Thank you. I was just going to say thank you so much for the presentation. It was wonderful. And I, I'm so happy to hear that the share table is able to be there now. That's great. And that's yeah. something the committee had had on the subcommittee years ago, and we had to take it off. And I'm so glad it's able to be there now. Um, and the bread pudding is absolutely delicious. It's one of my favorite things to eat, so I'm very glad to see that here, and I'm stopping myself from eating the whole thing. So, but. so the bread is a croissant, and it's whole grain. It's so, very good. Yeah, it's, it's, you can do fun things with what we have. Thank Ms. you. Mrs. Yes. Lebo. Yeah, and the uh, farro salad is phenomenal, okay. really phenomenal. Everything's delicious. It's, it's really good. Um, I just want to uh, reiterate what Sarah said. The thing about the share table that's so cool is you don't, you know, at first, we, the kids didn't really know what was going on. And sometimes they'd come up and they'd, sn they'd sneak it because <laughs> they'd be putting us on this table. But now, if they have something in their hand and they walk by the share table and they think they'd rather the celery than the carrots, they just put their carrots down, pick, pick up the celery, and go on their way. I had one young man say at the end of the third lunch, can I have a, a carrot? I said, sure. He said, can I have more than one? I said, sure. He said, can I have them all? <laughs> I said, sure. <laughs> because the first day, a few days, the first week we were there, we were throwing away good food because, so when we, we said to Sarah, we feel like we're teaching them to throw away good food because it's, we're going to compost it. But it's not much better than putting it in the trash. And it's amazing to see that there is no stigma attached to it at all. Mm -hmm. People will even say, if you get a muffin, will you save it for me? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> They're so cute. They really are so cute. The kid, the, the kid, the staff, and the kids at Quincy High School. Your staff has been phenomenal. The custodians have been phenomenal. They really have been phenomenal. And the security guards who keep funneling the kids our way. So it's working. But um, we're going to assess it and get that information back to the task force and the mayor to see where this could possibly go and what it would need. But it's wonderful. Superintendent. Yeah, I just want to um, thank Sarah and Jane. Uh, most recently, I had to meet uh, directly with the auditor from the state, uh, from DZ, relative to our food service program, and she could not speak highly of this team, Sarah and Jane. Um, you know, she gave me some examples of what other districts do and how other districts handle food service and how difficult it is to conduct an audit in those districts. In Quincy, was the exact opposite. Everything was in order. Uh, they're so impressed with all of the food offerings that we have, the fresh produce that is brought in, the composting program. Um, but most um, uh, impressed was the, uh, the service on Half Day Wednesdays. And uh, she actually asked if we would be agreeable to allow uh, other districts to come in to actually monitor how that is done so that we, as, um, you know, we would be a model for other districts on how it's served. So that's all a credit to Sarah and Jane. Uh, and that's just kind of the tip of the iceberg of um, what um, both of these individuals are doing. And they're always looking for the f to the future with regard to expanding our service at Lincoln Hancock and hopefully Wallace and as well within the next year or so. So a big thank you to both of you. And I know that our students and our families really appreciate everything you do. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you both. We all know now that our students are in good hands. Thank you for your leadership role. And thank you, Mrs. Lebo, too, for your leadership role in this as well. Thank you very much. Okay, item B, middle school athletic fees. This is uh, for referral to the Budget and Finance Subcommittee from Mrs. Hubley. Any comments, Mrs. Hubley? No, just want to work on it. Okay. Overview of the warrant process. Uh, again, another referral for the Budget and Finance Subcommittee by Mrs. Lebo. You all set, Mrs. Lebo? Just... Okay, overnight travel. We have Quincy High School History Bowl that we heard of earlier. Uh, this team is on its way to the national championship in Washington, D.C., a very proud event for Quincy Public Schools. On a motion, uh, oh, Superintendent Mulvey. Uh, if I could just have a motion to approve this out-of-state travel for our team, and we will be working to uh, find the funds necessary. I just um, spoke to the mayor, and I know the mayor may want to say a few words on that, but certainly uh, open to 
making sure these students have the funding they need to make this trip. Mayor? Uh, I'm just committed to doing that. I know I asked the superintendent offline here what the cost is. He's going to try to figure that out, and uh, we'll go to work to make this happen. Thank you. Thank you very much. On a motion of Mr. Gatto, seconded by Mrs. Lieber, we approve. Do we need a, a roll call? I don't know. Not okay, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, additional business? I don't see any. Communications? Upcoming school committee meetings are April 5th, May 3rd and 17th, June 14th, all at 6.30 and all right here at Cardington. Upcoming subcommittee meetings, again at Cardington, are facilities, security, and transportation on the 29th of March at 6, teaching and learning on the 29th at 6.45, and the policy on also on the 29th at 7.30. Reports of subcommittees, we have the Athletics and Wellness Subcommittee. Mrs. Cahill to report on the March 1st meeting. Mrs. Cahill. So we had a meeting of the Athletics and Wellness Subcommittee on Wednesday, March 1st at 6 o'clock. Um, Quincy Public School Athletic Director Kevin Mahoney presented a review of the Fall 22 Athletics. Um, Quincy High School had over 250 student athletes compete in the fall sports. Um, North Quincy High School had 260 student athletes compete. For winter, um, Quincy High School had 187 students compete. In Quincy High School, um, one of the biggest things he reported was that they had a decreased participation in their boys' hockey team. Um, and also, um, North Quincy High School had low numbers. So in the future, they may be looking at combining the North Quincy Quincy teams. Um, in North Quincy High School in the winter, they had 206 student athletes participate. Um, Mr. Bergoli had asked about the co-op teams, how many currently existed, and then there was discussion about um, the timeline for the Quincy, North Quincy hockey team, co-op team, um, and when that might take place. Um, currently, there are nine co-op teams in the system. And the hockey co-op is something that the um, athletic director is going to review um, going forward. Um, Mr. Bergoli asked about budget issues, and he'd like to see um, a, a process for approving apparel purchases to be presented to the school committee. Mrs. Lebo asked about supervision of um, coaches and would like a review of the orientation for coaches at upcoming meetings. Uh, Mrs. Cahill asked about how the um, high school locker rooms are monitored for sports, and Mr. Mahoney said that the coaches are responsible for before and after practice and home games, as well as security guards will also be um, monitoring the um, locker rooms as well. Mr. Guttrow asked if um, girls hockey team had grade 8 students playing on waivers, which they do, and um, he said that they may consider this for the boys' hockey as well. Um, 2023 sports, spring sports began on March 20th, and middle schools in the fall had tennis and cross country offered, in the winter, volleyball and wrestling, and in the spring, summer, um, swimming, <clears throat> in, and also outdoor track in the spring. Um, stipends for uh, middle school coaches was um, determined to be between $500 and $2,300. And also there was a review of helmets for girls lacrosse teams, and the MIAA does not recommend this as equipment. So that's a recap, and the full minutes are online for um, review. Thank you, Mrs. Cahill. We also have a report of the teaching and learning subcommittee that was held on March 1st. Mrs. Lebo to report. Yes, thank you, Mr. Santoro. On March 1st, we had uh, the Senior Director of Student Support Services, Ms. Papil, present to us on social-emotional learning, and she had with her a guidance counselor, a school psychologist, and a health educator, one from each district, um, that talked about the overall curriculum. In the elementary schools, we've added open parachute. I think we all heard about it at the school improvement plans, but we got to see some implementation of it at this meeting, so it was great to see that. They still have their PBIS going on there, but they added the open parachute. The middle school level includes um, understanding feelings, conflict resolution, diversity, inclusion, and belonging. Um, and at the high school level, they do postgraduate planning, healthy relationships, identity-based respect and belonging, giving and receiving support in life after high school. 
the uh, things like the cultural fair, postgraduate planning, and the Dove Youth Speak program is a poor part of the, of the um, high school programs also. Staff are working very hard to ensure that social emotional learning is integrated into the classroom at all levels. Um, Mrs. Cahill said it was ex exciting, but she was wondering how we could assess if it was working, and we've talked about the exit tickets, and also by um, students' feelings in their climate and, and culture surveys, attendance and the suspension rates are all indicators. And um, this is on the website if anybody wants to read it, but it was a great update. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Lebo. Okay, item nine, executive session for contract negotiations on a motion of Mayor Koch, seconded by Mrs. Cahill. We go into executive session. We, we will, will be coming back. We, we will be coming back. We will be coming back. Yes. Superintendent, call the roll. Yes. Yes. Thank you. We'll be returning after our executive session. Okay. Okay. The Quincy uh, School Committee is back in session after the adjournment for uh, item nine on executive session contract negotiations. On a motion of uh, Mayor Koch, seconded by Mrs. Lebo, that we approve the uh, local 888 food service workers chapter of the Quincy School Committee contract. Um, any comments? Questions? Superintendent, please call the roll. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, motion to adjourn. Motion to Mayor Coke to adjourn, seconded by Mrs. Lebo. Do we need a roll call on this? Paul and Pueva. Opposed? The ayes have it.